I've put out a few videos recently that feature my thoughts on the music industry, its failures and drawbacks, and how my independence as an artist is the most important thing to me. But I thought it would be interesting to look forward to the future, not at how things used to be, but how they might be soon. So here is a few of the most interesting predictions for the industry and my thoughts on where the reality of life as a 21st century musician is headed. AI. AI has the potential to revolutionize the music industry in a number of ways. One of the most promising applications is the use of machine learning algorithms to compose and produce new music. AI can also be used to analyze and understand music in ways that humans cannot, such as identifying patterns and trends in large collections of music, or predicting which songs will be popular. Additionally, AI can be used to help musicians and producers with tasks such as mixing and mastering, and to create personalized music recommendations for listeners. Finally, AI can be used to create new instruments and music making tools that allow for new forms of expression and creativity. I have a confession to make. I didn't write those words. Chat GPT did. I just asked it, what can AI do for the future of music? Yes. This new technology is both delighting and horrifying artists in equal measure. Much has been made of its lyrical ability. You can ask it to write a song about bananas in the style of Joni Mitchell, for instance, and it'll generate the lyrics in seconds. Yellow and green, hanging in the trees, bananas, oh how they please. Sweet and soft, a tropical treat, eating them can be beat, bananas. indistinguishable from the real thing, right? Pure Joni. Obviously, that's extremely bad, but this impressive technology is still in its infancy, and the next few years will bring about challenges we can't yet conceive of, and there will always be a place for human creativity. Nick Cave put it beautifully, saying, It could perhaps in time create a song that is on the surface, indistinguishable from an original, but it will always be a replication, a kind of burlesque. Songs arise out of suffering, by which I mean they are predicated upon the complex, internal human struggle of creation, and well, as far as I know, algorithms don't feel. Data doesn't suffer. Chat GPT has no inner being. It has been nowhere, it has endured nothing, it has not had the audacity to reach beyond its limitations, and hence it doesn't have the capacity for a shared, transcendent experience, as it has no limitations from which to transcend. One important consideration is copyright. Who owns a song created this way? Is it the prompter, the tech company? Given that the AI itself is trained by ingesting data from the internet, it's not going to be a clear-cut matter. Touring. It seems likely that the days of relentless round-the-world touring will be numbered as the costs associated with international travel increase, and that's not just rock and pop acts, but classical groups too. Getting a 45-piece orchestra around the world will get more and more expensive and complicated. There will likely still be appearances by the very biggest names who can comfortably fill stadiums, but the smaller acts will be squeezed. They will look to adopt hybrid models with intimate in-person shows in smaller venues watched simultaneously by a larger virtual audience online. Experiments are already underway. The EDM superstar Marshmello recently DJed to an audience of 10 million people in a game of Fortnite. Headsets and virtual reality will no doubt play an important part as the technology improves. There'll be an increased focus on experiences, special gigs that combine elements of augmented reality and immersive theater to create something extraordinary. It's possible to imagine this becoming spookily realistic as we learn ways of generating new visuals from existing materials. We've already seen hologram revivals of artists in their prime, like the Tupac experience at Coachella or the ABBA immersive experience Voyage, and it's just getting started. So if you've always dreamed of seeing the Beatles at one of their early shows in Hamburg or Hendrix burning his guitar at Monterey, then sit tight. It might be possible much sooner than you think. If this all sounds like a dystopian nightmare to you, don't worry, there'll still likely be a place for the good old-fashioned backroom bar band. Tipping an artist's income. 
The rise of tipping and microtransactions will spell a new golden age for monetizing your music. Virtual busking could prove a way for jobbing musicians to earn a living streaming from the comfort of their own homes as onlookers pop in and out of these virtual spaces to catch their sets. Artists will use a range of new technologies to make ends meet. Grimes recently raised $5.8 million selling NFTs to fans. Personally, I'm not optimistic about the long-term popularity or usefulness of NFTs, but they'll almost certainly be new ways of selling merch and other products that benefit musicians. More and more artists will sell online courses as the virtual education space continues to grow. Artists will further financially exploit their images by selling branded instruments and even virtual skins and stems of their songs so that users can become their favorite player in the online space and perform and remix their back catalog. Expect to see some big numbers flying around as the old timers cash out. Bruce Springsteen and Bob Dylan raised some big money recently, selling their back catalogs to Sony for $500 million and Universal Music somewhere in the region of $300 to $600 million, respectively. Stop the press. Just as we were editing this video, the news broke that Justin Bieber has sold his entire catalog to Hypnosis Songs Capital, who've previously acquired songs by Neil Young, Journey and Blondie for a reported $200 million payday. Not too bad for someone who hasn't even turned 30. Thanks Justin for making this video bang up to date. Music licensing and tie-in deals will become a major part of the economy and big financial players will move in, recognizing there are deals to be done as artists look to retire with a big payday. Iconic artists like Elton John, Madonna and Beyonce could all command huge sums because of their evergreen hits, songs that have been the soundtrack of people's lives and will be in high demand for future advertising campaigns and TV soundtracks. But that could also mean an increase in copyright infringement cases as big corporations look to protect their investment. See Adam Neely's excellent video, the grotesque legacy of music as property, for more on that subject. Diversified skill set. The days of just rocking up and plugging in are all but over. Musicians will have to learn a number of new skills to make their work viable, be it videographer, editor, or marketing, in order to reach their audiences. I think this is a good thing. The more transferable skills an artist learns, the better. It's all part of playing the game. We all know that very few artists have a career that lasts decades. So gaining greater control over the means of promoting your work will stand you in good stead for life if music doesn't work out. Unfortunately, artists have been taken advantage of in the past because they didn't have the skills or knowledge to look after themselves. And that can't continue. Video and music will continue to merge. We're already seeing the rise of animated artwork and tie-in video clips for songs on Spotify and Apple Music, and that's just the beginning. On the horizon are instruments that project virtual landscapes that shift and adapt to the tones of the music. Projection mapping in real time can transform a gig venue into magical wonderlands, as Muse did with their recent simulation theory tour. Much has been made over TikTok's booming role in popularizing songs, and whilst we can expect to see it grow for the next couple of years, we know that predicting the enduring popularity of social media is extremely difficult. Whether it'll last or be replaced, who knows? Watch this space though. The future of instruments. We're already in a world of touchscreen guitars and the future of instruments might get a whole lot stranger. We're of course likely to see a move away from wood to carbon fiber with 3D printing allowing fantastic new designs. Wearable tech like Imogen Heap's gloves will allow musicians to create sound with their bodies through expressive gestures. Music creation software will become more and more affordable and user-friendly, allowing users to create symphonies on their computers with human realistic computer-generated vocals. Think GarageBand times 1000. Personally, I think creative expression should always be encouraged and the medium itself doesn't matter. I recently interviewed the musician Nerina Palo and she spoke about her 12-year-old son's compositions. I mean, okay, I'm in a room surrounded by instruments. That's how I've, you know, enjoyed music. You, you, you know, the same for you. But I watch my son, who isn't particularly fussed at being brilliant on an in instrument, but you put him in front of a computer, you set him up with logic, and what he can do at 12 years old is quite astonishing. And he plays keyboard piano. So can you do that? No. No, I can't do it either. He's really into jazz, so he plays, like, these ridiculous chords on a, yeah, at 12 years old. Of course, there will always be demand for traditional crafted instruments from natural materials. They'll just become more expensive and rarer to acquire. So hang on to your instruments because they might 
turn out to be the best investment you've ever made. We're in a time of immense change, and while some of these developments might sound scary or downright dystopian, I'm optimistic that the future's bright for musicians. The ecosystem is changing to allow greater independence for artists and a fairer and more transparent system of compensation. Artists aren't being forced to surrender their copyright or get tied into long-term deals. I don't think advances in technology will make human composers and musicians obsolete. Advances in technology are inevitable. But the gramophone didn't kill live performance. Amplification didn't kill acoustic instruments. The MP3 didn't kill vinyl. AI-assisted music creation software is just the latest advancement. But I'm confident there will always be a place for craft and talent, a hunger for that most human of connections that comes with listening to a divine piece of music. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to know what you think the future holds in the comments below. If you enjoy my channel, then the best way to help support it is to take a look at my course site. I've put together a collection of courses that can help develop your craft as a musician. If you're a guitarist, then you'll enjoy Elevate Your Guitar Playing with Ariel Posen and my new fingerstyle guitar course, Mary's Method, where I teach you some of my specific picking patterns and techniques, plus how I play a solo without a plectrum. I've got two comprehensive courses that cover all aspects of using Ableton Live, taught with my friend and collaborator, Rachel K. Collier. And finally, if you're interested in starting your career as a professional musician, but don't quite know where to begin, then you'll find my courses how I built my YouTube channel and how I release music as an independent artist that cover everything I've learned so far in my career. And as always, thank you very much for getting to the end of this video and I'll be seeing you here very, very soon.